What up, though, people? Welcome back to Wake Up Woodward. We got another segment with the legend, Mr. Detroit News Rod Beard. Before we get into that drum roll for this next segment, you guys heard what Mr. Flando Sam said. Like this stream. We get to 125 likes, and you guys comment Grand Slam in the chat. We will select a winner to attend the party for free, this opening day party on Friday, uh, by the end of the show. So definitely go on ahead. Let's get those likes up to 125 before the end of the show. And we will announce the winner at the uh, uh, probably what doing our mailbag segment. Yeah. All right. That sounds. Let's do that. Let's do that. But hey, I need you guys help getting this drum roll going. You got anything in the in the uh, sound bank? No. Oh, hey, yeah. Let's rock. Hey yo! Shout out and welcome again to the legend Detroit News Rod Beard. It is Wednesday, so that means it is Woodward Pistons Wednesday, and we got to talk about these Detroit Pistons. I know last week. A lot of people, especially when they saw the clip on the Woodward Pistons channel, they were like, yo, Kool-Aid has just lost it, man. He is in panic mode. I didn't think I was necessarily in panic mode, but I know why you chuckling, right? But I know I brought a little bit different energy and a little bit different kind of take uh, than I probably have had all season. And really, it's the culmination of a lot of different things, seeing this team kind of go through what they are going through this year, not really meeting the expectation um players getting injured for the year um you know it's it's tough to see what's happening with Asar Thompson as well with the blood clots and whatnot I I'm still praying for him and I hope that they get that thing figured out but it was nice to see him on the practice floor at the last practice I was at but uh Rod as always we gotta start things off with Rod's thoughts I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, to Mike Curtis who's, hey. who's put in his yes. time his two years um but he's moving on to another opportunity, going to cover the uh, the Mavericks for the Dallas Morning News, hey. uh, and and certainly wish him all the best because uh, he came in uh, just kind of looking to to get some feedback, looking to get some some mentorship, and he certainly absorbed all of that, and now he's ready to move on to the next thing. And that's my role as a as a, a sports editor is, hey, get guys ready for the next level of, of what they're doing, and that's his mentor too, is to kind of get him ready for the next thing and not try to hold him back. So certainly uh, happy for him, wish him well in, in his next endeavor. But um, we posted the job out there and it, it's just, um, I think the, the yesterday I put it on Twitter, there, there might be 50, somewhere around 50 uh, people who have sent their, their work in, their applications and everything else. So it'll be a process. It's a process to try to find the next person. It's a process, man, but you know what? Anything that they can do as it relates to being underneath your tutelage and your mentorship, I can tell you firsthand, as Mike Curtis will and has as well, I, you you do a great job, man. You really do a great job. Um, I just want to make sure, again, as much as I can, that I definitely state that on any platform that I have. Rod Beard, thank you for all that you do for a lot of us out there, man. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, man, now we got to talk about the Pistons. <laughs> you gotta sell the job now sell it the pistons they're up and coming they got Cade cunningham let's go you sound like me from earlier in the season <laughs> hey we can be optimistic even though they're struggling we can be optimistic all right i'm back man I'm yeah let's back. go i'm man. back what's good rod <laughs> um i got nothing i mean i beat the wizard <laughs> beat the wizard beat the wizard um that's all i got that's yeah. all I got. There's nothing else. To hey. it, 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 and I think I said last week, if we could fast forward to the end of the season and just make sure nobody else gets hurt, like a season ending injury or something, yeah. let's go to that. No point. more of those season ending injuries. It's tough to see their best trade deadline acquisition in Simone Fantecchio. He's out. It was funny at the last practice, he and Monty Williams were on the treadmill, I mean, on the uh, bikes together, just kind of pedaling. And it was just like, man, oh, man, oh, man, I wish we could see him playing with kind of this iteration of the team right now because Jade Nivey and Kay Cunningham. They're getting a lot of playing time together. Um, it was tough to see Jalen Duran leave that last game. He uh, lost a tooth. Uh, I think the Pistons would have won that game. But the question that I've seen and continue to be bantied about, and we said that we were going to ask you today, Jay Nivey, Jalen Duran, and the man himself, Kay Cunningham, is that a trio that you expect to see on this Pistons team next year? Yes. Mm. Yes. Unless there is unless there is some trade that you cannot turn down and they want they want Ivy and the number one, two, three, whatever pick it is, 
if they want those two things and it's a, a trade you just can't turn down, then yes. I can't see them trading Cade or Duran. That I just can't see. It would have to be something magical for to throw Duran in. And I just don't think there is a deal that exists that they would trade Cade. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, I don't see any other way that works. Yeah, and then the other question I'm seeing is uh, for the people that are saying, you know what, I want to see them all back next year. Uh, the counterpoint to that that I'm seeing everybody get is, is that a winning formula? I, I believe personally that you need to put, obviously we all know this, and we started to show with this, they need a lot more help around them. I'm hoping they use this free agency to go out there and grab not one, but two solid free agents. I don't think that one kind of top tier free agent this year helps to push this this unit or this group into uh, a, a different stratosphere than where they are currently. But I want to see them go out there and get two of them. So I won't ask you, is that a winning formula? But what makes that a winning formula if those three return next year? Just another year of experience that we've, mm. we've seen that the, the level that Duran has been able to get to and a healthy Cade can get to. Um, I think there's something there, but you you hit it. You need to get that all star type guy who is going to come in and be able to augment what they already do. We haven't seen a lot of games where Cade takes over and Ivy takes over. So would it be Cade and All-Star X, whoever this person ends up being? I think that's a little bit more likely because, like I said, Cade needs to, for Cade to be the best him that he can be, he needs to be able to distribute the ball and kind of score secondarily, I'll say. If Cade is your leading scorer, he's not distributing the ball the way that you need to. And he's had few games like that where he's had double doubles. And I'll try to look that up to how many double doubles with assists that he's had this year. And I think that's the key. When, when, when he's able to be the, the kind of free safety type guy in his approach and the way that he handles stuff, that's when he can be his best self. Rod, this is somewhat related. I want you to uh, tell me where maybe I'm right or where I'm wrong. I'm worried about Jaden Ivey. I'm worried about the fact that in the month, a month of March, he shot 23% from three. I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of seeing games like 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 the uh, like uh, the Memphis game, for example, or even the uh, Orlando game early on in the New York Knicks game where bad calls helped cost him, but also Jaden Ivey playing, playing poorly in games where Cade Cunningham played excellently, costing them some games. I'm just, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Am I, are these fears justified or do you think Jay Nivey will be okay? I think he'll be okay because I think he, you're, you're asking him to be a lot right now. And again, the, the things that, that we would want that all-star X person to do is what Ivy's having to do right now. And so I, I think he can, if you slide him down and he's like your third option, I think that suits him a little bit more at this point in his career. When he sorts of, when he starts to figure it out, I think that's when this won't be as much of a concern. But I, I, th I agree with you. I think there's something there that the way that he's being utilized and what he feels like he has to do is a lot on his shoulders. And it's just tough. No, it's, for me, it's just been kind of difficult to watch Cade Cunningham have, I mean, in terms of numbers, obviously he's not going to be an all-star. A season that we would have all have taken from him. Mm. About, what, 22, 4, and 8 on you know, solid efficiency and improved three-point shot, all of that. But then when you look at some of the guys around him and, you know, Jaden Ivey, his three-point percentage has gone down. Asar Thompson, as much as we like everything else that he does, I think he has a worse three-point shot than I do. I mean, that's not really part of Jalen Duran's game. Well, obviously, for 10, not half court. Not half court. Not half court. Not half court. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, you saw, you saw, you know, Boyan get hurt earlier. Simone, Fon Simone Fontecchio is hurt right now. Yeah. Isaiah Stewart, who's actually been one of your best three-point shooters, is, is out for the season as well. I just, I'm worried that even some of the young guys that we all have a lot of hope in and have shown some positive things, at least on an individual level, may not fit with what would make Cade his best self. I think they can fit, but... Um... Again, the, the, the days that, that Cade may not have it are the days you need Ivy to be Cade, essentially, to be a 30-point scorer. And it, again, I just don't know that he has that in his bag yet to be a 20-25% or 20-25-point 20, scorer um, every day uh, when Cade is there. And, and so 
of his 62 games, Cade had 13 games with double-digit assists. Um, and he, that's going to need to be a higher number. He, the, the, the average by itself, seven and a half assists, you love it, but you want to see more games where he can just find other people to help him out, and he doesn't have to be that dude every single game. And right now it feels like that. Mm. So, Rye, uh, something that Kool-Aid brought up over the last couple shows is the possibility of possibly getting Paul George in free agency. And I think he would be the perfect piece to this young core. Um, he's a veteran, consistent scorer, uh, a wing that has done it on the biggest stages. Do you think he's a good fit? And how realistic do you think a move like that is? Or do you think that, you know, they need someone more like a DeMar DeRozan, a Tobias Harris, or a Zach Levine? They need two of, of, of any of those players you just mentioned. Two of everything. <laughs> yeah, but how realistic want, do you think a Paul you want, George you want, move is? You want the good news or bad news? Hey, give me the bad news first. Uh, I think it's impossible. Well, I won't even say impossible. I think it's highly unlikely. There's no PG still wants to win. And, and so I think he, he'll go to a winning level team. Yeah, um, that's the bad news. The good news is I think it's it's the fit that you need. It's the type of player that you need who's experienced, who can do a lot of things. And and we just keep talking about this. A six, nine sort of versatile wing who can play the three, who can play the four, who just plays some some defense. That's the prototypical what you need to survive in this league. That yeah. every team seems like they have a guy like that, except the Pistons right now. They Man. just don't have um, an all-star level guy. I think he would bring that sort of thing, that that sort of enthusiasm. Right. Oh, did we lose him? Oh no! I think he's frozen, like Elsa. <laughs> he was preaching too, yeah, and I had one. Oh, oh, oh you yeah, back? back? Yeah, I'm back. Um, no, I, I was saying that. He doesn't need a lot of shots. I think he can fit his game and mold his game to Cade and everybody else, where I think that's a really good fit offensively, defensively, everything else. But there are only so many of those in the league that you can go and get, and I just don't think he's going to be gettable. Yeah, and, and you know what, Rod? I, I'm hoping at the very least, I know that they've been connected to guys like Tobias Harris. I, I want them, even though I know it's a slim chance, I want them to take an opportunity to say, you know what, Paul George, Here's our offer. We're going to try and give you the most money, more money than anybody else out there is going to give you to at least show that they do care about bringing in the right type of talent. But I know there's just been uh, links to Tobias Harris. I've heard like DeMar DeRozan. Um, I, we've heard uh, that they've been, you know, over the last few years, they've been uh, in some type of deals with the Utah Jazz a couple times for Boyan Bogdanovich and then for Simone Fantecchio. I know that the Utah Jazz have a couple players over there and John Collins as well as some Laurie Marketing who've been on the trade blocks before. I'm hoping that the Detroit Pistons aren't resting on any laurels and that they're going out there and they're trying to turn over every single stone because I do believe they need two impact players uh, either through the trade market or through free agency to add to this squad for them to really take a not just a step forward but to really complement these young players. I do believe that right now if you get more players on this team, it does reduce the responsibility of players like a Jade and Ivy and probably put them in a better position to succeed. But um, another area that they're going to have an opportunity to make something happen is in the draft as well. And I know that you and I are on record as saying it's probably better for them to trade that pick because you don't want to get younger. But have there been any players? And I saw you were active as well during March Madness. I was at the Purdue-Tennessee uh, game as well as the first one in the Sweet 16. Uh, and just seeing Zach Eady and seeing... <laughs> the six six wing out of Tennessee, Dalton connect. Goodness gracious, and he's more than just a three point shooter. Uh, has there been anybody that's kind of impressed you uh, during this March Madness run as it relates to who the Pistons should look at in the draft? No, I was going to say it's connect. It's absolutely connect that. Yeah. Um, he needed a little bit more help around him, but he he shot the ball like uh, local people will, will say Nick Stauskas or Dun Duncan Robinson when they were at Michigan. That's the way, the level that he shot the ball. And it felt like, um, I think he had 16 of their first 21 points in that last game. It's just, that's a shooter. That's a dude, just give me the ball in the right spot. Now, now again, let's, let's think. That guy in the corner, when Cade is, is, is driving and he's got to kick it to the weak side, Dalton Connect in, the, in that corner, mm -hmm. yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yep. Yeah, I, I like it a lot too. He, it was different. You know, you see these guys play on TV. And um, you see their talent, but kind of being there in person, it was a pretty epic experience. Zach Eady, 
uh, putting up the 40 and 16. But Dalton Connect, I feel like he had the more impressive game. He showed um, his skills on all three levels, all three levels. Mm -hmm. Catch and shoot, dribble and shoot, at the three-point line, two, three feet back from the three-point line, able to put the ball on the deck, able to get into the uh, into the paint, able to hit from mid-range, and uh, even has a little bit of bunnies, man, to get up and put the ball down and, and dunk it. But uh, I, that's the guy. That's the guy for me. I know there's a lot of people out there who they wonder about Alex Saar as well, who's probably the presumptive number one overall pick. But there's a lot of uh, similarities as it relates to he and Duran. I know that Alex Saar, he gives he, – he, he takes more threes. He's not making those threes, but he is putting in that work right now. And he does have a little bit of wiggle. He has a little bit of dribble to his game as well. But largely, he'd be the five on this squad where Jalen Duran is. And so if I am the Pistons, I'm hoping they're looking more. If they're going to draft a player with that first pick, I'm hoping it's somebody like a Dalton Keith who absolutely showed out, uh, in my opinion, in this tournament. You know, I wish – we can see more of them, but uh, Purdue got that win. Uh, but it was a great game. It was a great game. Anything else from the crew? Well, uh -huh. Rod, you uh, uh, you here. There's a reason why you're why you're so good at what you do. You completely killed the Paul George dreams for me because here's the thing: <laughs> we were actually we were talking before the show about just spitballing some of the best players to never win a championship. I mean, Paul George, he's had a lot of he had some you know, great runs with Indiana, with OKC, and with the Clippers, but a ring is kind of what he's missing, and he's not going to get it with these Pistons, at least not in the next couple of years. So uh, that was a great point by you and something that I didn't even consider. So, yeah, thank you for that. And you know what, before oh, I let you... PG, PG is 30, he'll turn 34 uh, next month. Yeah, it's I don't know how much tread is left on the tires for PG. He's still playing at an all star type level. Um, what's the salary number? Let me give you let me give you some hope here. OK, he's had some nice contracts over the years. Yeah, he's not the most expensive 40, star. Forty five and forty eight. All right. Close that window. <laughs> <laughs> You can't pay PG forty five and forty eight. That's that's um, that is not, no, no. I'll, I'll shut that dream down completely. That's <laughs> you're not that's paying them yeah. Jared Goff money, huh? You're right. You give JG forty nine. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? Before I let you go, Rob, CK says thanks, Rod. Always a pleasure listening to you. It's cool to see the people put legend in the chat and whatnot. Uh, it's a good homage to who you are as a person and and who you are and have been as a professional. I appreciate your time on the show, man. Any last words? No, no. I, I always try to brush that stuff off because I learned from from the legends and the, the Terry Fosters of the world um, who really took me under there when you helped me out in the Rob Parker. So I'm just paying it forward. That's all I can do. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank yep. you as always, man. This has been a great segment. I know you mentioned the good and the bad as it relates to Paul George. I also have some good and bad news. Mm. Some of that bad news is insurance rates have gone up in the state of Michigan and none of us are surprised by that the good news though is that Swiss insurance is here to help right now more than ever it is important to